Okay, I'm going to use JFlap to um, uh, create this DFA. It's a, a DFA that accepts strings over the alphabet A, B um, that begin with zero or more A's, um, followed by an odd number of B's, um, and here's a regular expression that represents that same um, DFA. So I'm going to double click on the JFlap icon and that popped up this um, window and I'm going to select finite automaton because of course DFA stands for um, a deterministic finite automaton, right? So it makes sense. Um, and um, the first thing I need to do in order to um, make that DFA is I need to place some states. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go over here to the state creator tool and click on that and then I'm going to just um, use my left mouse button to click and when I do that, so I'll click, I get Q0, click, I've got Q1. Um, I'm going to add a few, let's see, I'll do a Q3. Oops, that was Q2, sorry. Um, and I can actually... Um, make my states a little bit bigger if I want. I'm just going to slide this automaton size bar over, make sure that my um, that my state creator is still selected, and I'm going to make a um, Q3 and a Q4. We don't actually need all of that, but it'll let me demo a couple of other things. Um, now, of course, um, once I have a state, I need to pick a start state, and Q0 was going to be our start state, right? So I'm going to left click on the um, on the attribute editor tool here. And by the way, all of my clicks are going to be left clicks unless I tell you otherwise. There's a few things that I need to right click, and creating a start state is one of them. So I'm going to go to Q0 and right click, and that lets me select that this is going to be my initial state, my start state. Um, and you can see we get the little triangle instead of the arrow we use in class, but the triangle is pretty good. Um, I can go over to Q1 if I say, oops, I didn't want Q0 to be um, my initial state. I wanted Q1 to be my initial state. Um, if I right click on Q1, I can pick initial state. And since we can only have one initial state, Q1 snags it. I'm going to go back and make Q2 by right clicking and then selecting initial Q0. Sorry, Q0 is back to being my initial state. Um, now, one of the transitions that we had in that diagram, here I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, one of the transitions that we had in that diagram was a B going from Q1 to Q2. Here, let's see if I can show you that diagram again. There you go. So loops are a little bit different. So we'll start with. Um, this transition the B from Q1 to Q2 and then another B back from Q2 to Q1. So let's do a, a transition from Q1 to Q2 that has a B on it. So I'm going to click on my transition creator tool and I'm just going to use my left mouse button. I click and then I drag and let go um, and it shows me this little box into which I type what I want my transition to be in this case B. Um, and I can do the same thing again from Q2 to Q1, and I can make that a B. And it does a nice job of sort of rounding these things out. Um, of course, I wanted Q1 to be an accept state, right? Q1 to be a final state. So I can go back into my attribute editor, and I can right click on Q1 and make that a final state. Um, just so that this ends up the way my picture did. I'm going to throw Q3 down here, and Q4 is going to be sort of an extra state that we'll just use for fun. Um, I think I already showed you already, but if I'm in the attribute editor mode, if this arrow is selected, I can move my states around, and it's actually nice. My transitions stay stuck. Um, okay, the next thing that we needed was a um, an A transition from um, Q0 to itself, right? We need a loop, a self loop. Um, and you saw that if I'm in transition creator mode, I can do a transition by clicking and dragging with the left button. So like I need another B from Q0 to Q1. So if I click and then let go and type the letter B and hit enter, there's my B. Um, 
and you don't actually have to hit enter. So if I like want to uh, to have a transition from Q1 to Q4 that has a C on it, um, I can also just click outside um, somewhere and, and that C gets in there. Um, we'll leave that for now. I'm going to show you how to delete transitions and, and states a little bit later, so we'll leave that in there for the moment. But what I was trying to do was make this loop on Q0, and remember, um, to make a transition, you drag from where you want to start the arrow to where you want it to end. In this case, I just wanted to start and end at Q0, so if I just click on Q0 while I'm in this um, transition creator mode, so I'm just going to do a click, and it immediately asks me, what do you want for your loop? Um, I'm going to label this one an A. So um, now I have as many A's as I want, followed by a B, and then as many B's as I want, as long as I have an even number, right? Um, so let's see, what else did I want to show you? Um, let's, let's just look at Q4 for a minute. Um, I've got this C transition. Now one of the things that we do in class that we don't do, um, that, that we do because our textbook, Hine, um, uh, does this, but it's a little bit um, messy in uh, in JFlap. Is let's suppose I want to have a transition from Q1 to Q3. Actually, I want to have two transitions, one for A and one for B. And we often will use a shorthand in class that has A comma B here. Um, but in JFlap, we can't do that. In JFlap. Um, JFlap's smart in that if I say, ooh, you know, let me do another transition from Q1 to Q2. This time I want to do um, a transition with an A on it. It kind of stacks the transitions, and so you'll see this is A comma B. That's a little bit different than this A, B. Um, and if I drag another transition over here and I say, okay, now I want a B, you'll see it doesn't do anything because it knows B is already in there. On the other hand, if I'm going from Q1 to Q3 and I drag and I say, now give me an A, you'd think it would say, oh, A's already in there because of that A comma B. But when I hit enter, no, it, it um, let's pull this, oops, let me go into, come on, um, the uh, attribute editor mode so I could pull this down a little bit. And you can see that A is different from A comma B. Um, and so what we can do is we can delete things that we don't like. So um, if I have a transition that I want to get rid of, um, there's a couple of things I can do. Let me just add one more transition onto this um, Q1 to Q3 um, state. So I'm going to drag from Q1 to Q3. Let's make it a C also. Not that we really want to keep a C, but it's fine and let's drag oops let's maybe if I go up here I selected right I selected the attribute editor just move Q2 up a bit so that those don't bang into each other um, I can um, I can delete a state if I want I go on to this tool here the deleter tool sorry not a state I can delete a state but um, for example if I delete Q4 Boom, Q4 is gone. I just went over there and clicked with my left mouse button on the state. Um, I can also delete um, a transition if I want to get rid of that A. I can just click on the A. Um, I can also click somewhere on the arrow, and that gets rid of whatever state, whatever transition was closest to the arrow. Um, if I want to get rid of uh, the last one, let's just get rid of that. Um, and let's see what else might you want to know in terms of creating these things um you can um make a new transition um well actually let's finish this off first right so so um the difference between this um not quite dfa and the dfa that i showed you earlier is of course it's not a dfa according to hein unless you have an out transition for each letter of the alphabet and if we ignore the fact that i was playing with c's for a little bit a little bit ago um and just say this is over the alphabet a b that c was just a mistake um then um q0 has a out and b out q1 well i guess we don't want that a there for now right so i just clicked on it let's go back here 
Um, so Q1 has a B out now, but no A out. So we need to get the transition tool and just do a transition from Q1 to Q3. And we'll call that A. And another transition from Q2 to Q3 that's also A, right? So I dragged and, um, and then unclicked on Q3. And I'm going to just hit A and Enter. Um, and, you know, I feel like having some curvy transitions. So I'm going to um, uh, click back on the attribute editor. And if I click on a uh, on an arrow on a transition, I can grab this little circle here and make it a little bit more loopy. Um, and then I need to click somewhere. Oh, I think I actually need to click on the transition. There you go. And that makes it a nice rounded transition if I'm feeling like I want transitions. Um, I still don't have a, um, a DFA yet, right? Because Q3 doesn't have any out arrows, any out transitions. So I need to go to the um, transition tool again. And um, I need to have a loop on Q3 that gives me and that goes out on an A. And then I really, I would like to write A comma B here, but it's really important that I do it separately. So I'm going to do an A and then I will click again and type B. So I have a loop for A and B. And let's just, oops, let us let me go into um, attribute editor mode again so that I can drag these guys up a little bit just so that when I'm looking at it, my, um, ooh, what if I do that? There we go. Isn't that nice? Let's make this a little bit smaller. Um, I can read all the letters and see which letter goes with which with which um, transition. That's, that's really very important and very useful. Um, last thing I want to show you in here, let me shrink this down a little bit. Um, you know, Q3 here is a trash state or a trap state or um, Hotel California state. You can get in, but you can't get out. Um, right? As soon as you get into Q3, you're stuck. You can never leave. Um, and maybe I want to sort of label that state, right? Maybe I want to change the label. I can, I can um, change the label so that I can change the name of it from Q3 to something else. I can just right click on here and set the name. So I could say, oh, instead of Q3, let's call this one, well, I could call it trash. That's a little bit weird that these are Q0, Q1, Q2. So um, I'm going to right click on it again and I'll set the name. Let's, let's call this one, um, let's set it back to Q3. Um, and I'm going to click outside so that I unhighlight Q3. But what I would like to do actually is I would like to kind of put a label on here that I can view when I'm interested, but I don't have to look at all the time. Um, so I'm going to right click again and I can say change label. And I'll call this my um, trash or trap state. Um, and it shows me this label and I can um, right click anywhere in the white area is what I did. So it was a right mouse click out here. Um, and there's this option display state labels so I can hide it or I can right click again and say display state labels and click and it's back. Um, and so it's useful. Um, state labels can be kind of like uh, comments in your code, right? They're very useful. So um, Q1, uh, it's important to notice that when you get to Q1, you always have an odd number of Bs, right? It's my accept state. I better have an odd number of Bs. Um, I can right click on here and um, I'll change the label and I'm going to call this odd number of Bs. And of course, I'll call Q2. Let's change the label and we'll call that even number of Bs. Um, and yeah, I don't think I really need a, a, um, a uh, label on that Q0 right now. So I am going to save my, um, my new uh, JFLAP file so that I could open it later. I'll go into my JFLAP diagrams and I'm going to call this, well, I actually did this before, right? Um, so I'll call this, uh, I don't know, demo video diagram. And I will, oops, hit save. Um, and now I can open this up later if I want. I think that's all I wanted to show you for now on this. That's just kind of setting up a DFA. And this is just to draw the picture, right? The interesting thing comes that, that this can do more than just draw pictures. And we'll see that in another video.